all of a sudden in the middle of the verse, the he instead of being Melchizedek is now Abram? How would the reader even know that? Now it's possible that that's what happened, just like it could be the little green man who brought out the bread and wine, right? You can insert a char- an unknown character anywhere into a verse that you want, but does that make sense? If it's he four times referring to Melchizedek, why wouldn't the fifth time be Melchizedek? So that's the question I'm, an- I'm asking, and I want to look not just what does Nehemiah think, because I know the truth and I have all the answers. <laughs> I want to see what do the Jewish sources say about this? And look, why would the he be Melchizedek versus Abram? Why, in other words, why, why would it be that Abram gave Melchizedek a tithe versus Melchizedek giving Abram a tithe? Let's be, what's the answer? What do you think? Let me ask that question again. Why would it be? Why would, so, so the, the, the default reading of this, if I didn't know anything outside these verses, it's he, 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 Melchizedek, four times. And the fifth time he would still be Melchizedek because it didn't indicate in the verse that the subject changed from Melchizedek to Abram. Right. So why, why does the JPS put in brackets Abram? By the way, the reason they put Abram in brackets is by default he would be Melchizedek. So if you want right. to tell people it's Abram, you got to put Abram in brackets. <laughs> Otherwise, it'd be no way to... You'd have to bring that information into the verse. You wouldn't get it from the verse. That's what they call uh, you know, eisegesis versus exegesis. Exegesis is a fancy Greek word for interpretation. It's actually two Greek words. Jesus, G-E-S-I-S in English, means read, and ex means from, exegesis, mm-hmm. from reading. And eisegesis is you, instead of reading it from the verse, I read it into the verse. So why would someone read into the verse that it was Abram who gave the tithe to Melchizedek when four times the subject was Melchizedek and by default, it would still be Melchizedek giving the tithe, right? And he gave him a tenth of everything that he, by default, would be Melchizedek. Why change the subject from Melchizedek to Abram? So on the surface, I'm thinking it has to do with something pertaining to Melchizedek being a priest. Of course. And we know that priests in the priests Torah... Priests get tithes. Priests get tithes. Not warriors like Abram, right? So the people who said, oh, all of a sudden it switched, he gave him a tithe of everything. Why would Abram... Why would Melchizedek give a tithe to Abram? Melchizedek is the priest. Priests are on the receiving end of tithes, not the other way around. Now, I don't want to get too deep into this in the, in the, in the Tanakh because I want to focus as much as we can on this yes. and how this has been interpreted. But Nelson, do you know the difference? Well, let's start with what's the Hebrew word for priest? The Hebrew word for priest is Kohen, Kohen. Kohen, right. So if you meet a doctor and the doctor or a lawyer's name is Kohen, he is a Kohen. He's a descendant from Aaron the priest. So Kohen is a priest. And what's the word for Levite? Levi. Is every Levi a Kohen? No. Is every Kohen a Levi? Yes. Okay. Who receives the tithes according to the Torah? So according to the Torah, the Levites receive the tithes from the people of Israel and the priests receive a tithe of the tithes from the Levites. Right, so they receive a tithe of a tithe. And it's a little bit more complicated than that because there's three different tithes in the Torah. Some people interpret that as 30%. My understanding, which I'm not going to get into today, but I'm just going to say my understanding is that's three different uses of the same tithe. Mm -hmm. In other words, I can give the temp as as an Israel, as an Israelite who is not a Levite and not a Kohen, I can take my tithe and I can give that to the Levite, I can give it to the widow and the orphan, or I can use it on my pilgrimage when I go up to Jerusalem. Uh, I had this friend who was in a church, regular non-denominational Protestant church, and he told me how there was this family where the woman was a widow and she had these children and the house burned down. And he went to his pastor and he said, I wanna take some of my tithe and I want to give it to this widow whose house burned down to help with her orphan children. Don't tell me. And the pastor said, if you do that, you're stealing from the church. You can give her whatever you want, but not from the tithe. The tithe belongs to the church. That's not a Tanakh concept. No. The Tanakh, the Torah, talks about giving the tithe to the Levite. There's a situation where the tithe can be given to the widows and the orphans, and there's a situation when the tithe can be used to go up to the pilgrimage to Jerusalem. If you use it for the pilgrimage in Jerusalem, it says don't forget the widow and the orphan and the Levite, right? right? They've got to be included <laughs> as well. Don't just use it on yourself. 
But those are to hear the rest of this conversation, head over to nehemiaswall.com and become a support team member today.